how is everyone's Wednesday? <laughs> Anna's defense. Oh, sorry, Hannah's. Hannah's defense. How's it going? Happy Wednesday. Welcome back. This is our, our writing day, so I'll give everyone just a minute. <laughs> you liked it? I'm glad you enjoyed it. It's awesome. It's a little dark in here today, I think, because it's uh, it's kind of rainy out. So I guess it's kind of a perfect, kind of a perfect mood thing for our story. All right. Now we've switched over. Let's talk about our world building techniques. So. Most of my stories you'll find have a dark element to them. I prefer the subgenre of dark fantasy. And I've read a few, um, the authors are of course eluding me right now, but I've read a few dark fantasy novels that I just fell in love with this genre. And I fell in love with stories about madness, kind of like H.P. Lovecraft stories, where it's like every normal everyday life, there's something just under the veil that we can't see, and there's, you know, there's a madness, like, waiting on the other side, like, ev any and every man or woman um, is unable to escape it, the inevitable downfall of that person, and that's always fascinated me as long as I can remember. So a lot of my stories have that kind of feeling to them. Now we've talked about world building before. Um, so you know, we'll, we'll touch on that, but I think we got into some of the character ideas and such before. And one of the biggest things I want to impart to you as a writer for people is you want to evoke all the senses. Um, when I like to do my audio stories, I wish, you know, it's one of those things, the reason why it takes so long is I either have to go find the sounds <laughs> or I have to purchase the sounds and purchasing the sounds can get really pricey. So a lot of times I opt to record my own noises, especially since I live right near a city. So I can take all of my city sounds and everything and place them in there. And the problem I have with writing a lot of my novels um, is, as you can hear in some of my stories, uh, I get really excited explaining science and um, explaining things. So my one thing I have to work on um, is not telling the reader too much, but showing them, like slowly breaking it down in the moment. So a little more action side. So that's something I have to work on and also some of my sentence structures um, and flow. Check in with chat here. So for, for the world building styles, and also this applies to D&D, when I'm writing a campaign for D&D, I don't just write stories. Uh, I like to come up with adventures for the people that are going to be there. We want sound effects, we want um, sights, visual representations, which is why maps are so wonderful. Um, in stories, in novels, in audio stories, audio books, that sort of thing, um, it's a really great to engage all those senses. So just like in D&D &D, when you're wanting to do that for your players, uh, that's why we go into such a detail over descriptions, right? Um, details over the area they're in, details over the culture, the society, what they've fought for, their religion, why they might believe the way they do, um, how they actually came to be on that land. Were they originally always there? Were they natives? What does that land look like? Is it a desert? Is it plains? Is it 
you know, mountainous? Is it cold? You know, what kind of religion would you base around people that are always in the cold? Maybe you have like frost giants. Maybe you have, you know, which is like the Yeti, right? Uh, which would probably be them in response to big giant bears, polar bears and the like. Um, stories about gods or goddesses that come down to walk among the men we all have stories like that like these these really broad tales about these um these gods you really want to take it to the next level for that reader so when you're mapping out your outline you want to think about the areas that you eventually want the story to go from chapter one all the way to whatever your last chapter is going to be. And you're going to take a look at that and you're going to say, okay, where is my character going to go and what motivates them to get there? So in your beginning story, you have to outline your world on what this character experiences, their day-to-day -day life, their job, um, what type of professions are needed in those worlds that they're in. Um, is it a modern society? Is this a society that's based in the past? If you're wanting to do a historical type setting, you'd need to take a look at, you know, that era. Like, just for example, steampunk, you'd take a look at the Victorian era and if steam had taken off instead of, you know, normal engines and whatnot that we, we use now, the modern engine. Oh, Sandfrost, thank you so much for the host. I appreciate it. Hope you're having a great Wednesday. And once you've kind of, you know, outlined that and I know a lot of people get worried and caught up in one kind of idea that you really have to get detailed. You can get as detailed as you want, or you can just kind of dip a toe into that culture. If that character is about to take an adventure into a whole other area, maybe you want to focus more on the other area, but you do have to lay a foundation for that character and roots for the reader to understand why this character is motivated to do what they do, how they behave, what they eat, you know, all of that stuff. <laughs> oh, and Sandfrost, also, thank you so much for the follow as well. Thank you, my friend. So, once we kind of figured out our foundation for our world building in the first chapter. And once you kind of figure out where they're going to at towards the end of your book, you, you're going to take that outline that we talked about and you're going to apply that to each section of the book. Um, and you know, we talked about evoking senses. So when we're evoking those senses as they go along, they're also experiencing this culture or this world or, you know, what, whatever your setting is going to be for the first time. So since we're experiencing it for the first time, that means we have to write it from that. You know, writing is so simple, but it's also so complex at the same time. You're wanting to get across to the reader something magical and that is first time experience like we all get excited over that first time experience right oh my goodness oh goodness okay troll guy troll dude got another ice guy goodness last two days troll names man just just ridiculous <laughs> Welcome everybody, welcome to our newest members in the community. Welcome to the dark side. So, let's take a look. 
right. So one of the things that a lot of new writers don't pay attention to when they first start writing is motivation. But what do I mean by motivation? Well, conflict. There has to be a substantial amount of conflict in your setting to really want that you know that main character to want to get out I mean what what causes them to want to get out of that main setting maybe they're an adventurer maybe that's just kind of what they do it's their job um, you know or military type characters or warriors or protectors or you know something bad enough happens in their life that they're out for revenge or that's kind of how it starts like you know, you, you have to think about conflict, not just with your character, but with the actual setting that the character is in. There has to be some type of conflict um, in order to move or progress the story along. So say for instance, we take our everyday character, our person that, you know, is just trying to get through life just trying to figure it out like the rest of us and all of a sudden something horrible happens, right? You have to make it believable and if it's in a fantasy setting, um, like we mentioned with our, um, our template, our outline for that, it has to be something that really kicks them in the ass. It's just gonna get them out there. All right. So now that we have our settings, we know what's important, we know religion, we know culture, we know all those factors in our world, world building, um, you also have to think about within that setting how the hive mind kind of thinks, which means everyone in the city, what's the norm, the societal norm, and why does your main character or how does your main character differ from that? Because this isn't their story, unless of course you're, you're telling it from a global perspective and you're telling multiple different stories, in which case you would have to do multiple different you know, outlines for each one of those characters and why they're motivated. Maybe somehow they end up coming together. And that's something you're gonna have to figure out for yourself as if it's going to be from several different um, perspectives. And those can get tricky uh, we'll talk about that, I think, either this next time or the time after. Today, everyone voted on world building, so that's what we're trying to focus on today. Um, do they, so now we know how they differ from everybody else, or um, from the other side of that coin, how are they the same as everyone else, and what changes their mind? So maybe they're just like everybody else. They think like everybody else. They base their actions off of survival. They're just trying to get by, you know, that sort of thing. And then something happens. What is that, you know, that moment, that pivotal moment that just takes that character and changes their mind forever? You know, don't just, don't just tell it to people. Don't just, and this happened, and then this character was mad, the end. No, you have to like, let it unfold in layers for the reader. So this action happens and then another action happens and it just kind of spirals until that person decides enough is enough. I'm, you know, I'm going to do this. The reluctant hero sort of stories. A lot of people like those. <laughs> hey, Zangard. What's up? How's it going? We're doing our writer's workshop right now. We just finished our story. We're doing our writer's workshop. And then after that, we'll be switching over to Fortnite's PVE. <laughs> but welcome, welcome back. Okay, something to kind of think about um, is would this story make a good movie. Why or why not? Because if you're writing a good story, a good book, you should be able to envision that as a movie easily. So I want you to think about how a show or movie unravels the main character for us. 
that is a great way to figure out how to write your novel. Your pacing, um, how long you need to spend on the setting. If it's an action type story, are you going to spend a long time talking about the society and houses next to you? And the, you know that's that's all going to be more geared towards someone that's wanting to have a fantasy, like an epic style fantasy, where. Everything is explained to you from the religion to the type of food they eat to the kinds of weapons their military uses to different rankings in the society, kings, queens, whether it's more democratic, you don't know. But in an action type story, all that just kind of gets tossed and we're in the moment. We're in that first person perspective. Um, and a lot of people actually struggle with writing in present tense like as things happen. Most people write in third person perspective. They write outwardly and they write in past tense as, as if they were telling the story from the future. So it really depends on what style of writing you're wanting to do to really get that effect across to your audience. <laughs> What's up, Anna? Uh, Hannah? Oh, the story? Did the story scare you? Oh. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was thinking about when someone's listening to it, I wanted a surprise moment where they thought we were just listening to a recording. And then the surprise moment is she's actually interacting or in, yeah, this entity is interacting with you and now you're in trouble. It's kind of like the idea behind the ring where if you watch the video... Um, you now have to like make a copy and send it or you know it, it's just like this perpetual curse that goes on for people that listen to it and it's doomed they're doomed <laughs> oh cool well I hope you enjoyed it it was meant to be a little spoopy <laughs> okay so also things to think about is when putting your story together and you're putting all the pieces together for the readers, you want to kind of think about how do the people live there? Is it a more modern society? Is it a tribal society? Um, maybe we're in medieval times, you know, and again, if you're doing stories based out of history, it's best to kind of do a little research about what the heck are bracers, you know? Um, what's the difference between a broadsword and, you know, something larger like a bastard sword, which wasn't at all practical and nobody really used them. It was just kind of the big bruisers that would have the shield and one swinging motion and be like really slow, but they, they tried to sweep people out and push them back pretty much. Uh, battle strategies was something I invested a lot of time in for Hell's Gate because I wanted to see how formations worked um, within the ranks. So I, I did a lot of research on Japanese battle strategies, uh, what types of formations they had. They had arrowhead formations. They had uh, formations where they'd have bait, where bait would walk out and the others would stay in the pass, like behind so that when people would come down to flank the bait, they would come out and flank the army. So it's, it's just really interesting to read about those sort of things if that's what motivates you for that story. And since the story is going to have one of those epic battle scenes, why not put time into researching how that's going to work? You don't have to I mean, honestly, I've read stories where it's obvious the writer has never seen battle or combat, and they don't get too in-depth over the battle semantics, but for me, I like thinking how a soldier would think as they are like attacking one another or what they're paying attention to on their opponent, you know, how their opponent is moving, that sort of thing. So you want to pay attention to all of that as well. Um, 
I know we mentioned religion and social status. Social status is a big thing in stories. How does that relate to your main character? What is that? Is there a hierarchy, or is it an all-inclusive type tribal society? Um, is there the elder um, that is revered? Are elders not revered? Maybe kind of like here in the U.S. where. I can't speak for everyone, but I know there's a lot of regions in the U.S. where they don't respect old people at all. They kind of see them as a hindrance and uh, that they should just kind of go away. You know, it's, it's, it's cultural, you know? You have to look at that. Um, are they the type of society that has extreme wealthy and impoverished or do they have a middle as well middle class citizens is there just mostly middle class and some wealthy like you have to you have to think about resources in the area too on the land like the lands that they're in they're from is it a really rich resource area so they're a wealthy society or is it not so great so they're kind of picking at each other you know uh, really tough for survival trying to get through um, is wealth distributed evenly or are there you know, lots of corruption um, also in regards to religion you want to think about things like superstitions you know we talked about gods and goddesses earlier and God, some people believe in mono, you know, monotheism, one God, um, you want to take those and apply them as well, superstitions. Why might that society have the superstitions that they do um, based off of something their ancestors believed, which translates into modern day urban legends? So it's really fun. You can go super in depth or you can go as shallow as this one person's perspective. You know? Okay. Is this place a secure place for them to live? Um, is it war torn? Is it torn apart by differing religions? Is it torn apart by, uh, you know, maybe it's they're at civil war? Maybe one place. You know, once the other place's resources, or maybe there's a com conflict in religion, um, you want to take those into account as well. Uh, what are the politics of that place? Like, what is one made, you know, major belief system that everyone believes in for their um, for their society? Who do they vote for? Who are they more inclined to vote for? Um. So once you kind of create the overall idea for each of these systems, oh Creeper, hey Creeper, I saw you, I saw you post on there earlier. <laughs> Welcome back, happy Wednesday. So now that you have your big idea, you have your big global perspective on how the society functions and why they behave the way they do. Um, if you guys are familiar with a really old school sci-fi called Logan's Run, the entire society was built off of youth. Uh, they believed once you turned 30, you were no longer useful to the society society and you were therefore sacrificed um, and it was considered an honorable way of dying because you weren't useful to the society anymore so the entire society society was dedicated to youth and I'm not sure if that was a social commentary on people feeling old after 30 in the 70s and they felt like um, they were, you know, like they were being judged or something, but I think everyone kind of feels that past a certain age, like my life is over after 30 kind of thing. <laughs> but to most people watching that back then, it was a sci-fi, but it was also a horror because it was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe they, they kill these people. But then within the society, there were people that didn't have that belief. They were runners and 
that's you know that's perfect that that's a perfect way of looking at that is does your main character believe in that system until maybe one day they're gonna turn 30 soon and their their death row is coming up for them and maybe they just you know maybe 30 is too young to die you know that <laughs> that is you know that's the thing oh the emotes Oh, those are such adorable emotes. I love it. So now that we have our big, all-encompassing ideas of society, and we've outlined that, we've outlined the beginning and our past stories, then we're going to look at our journey areas. And when you're looking at your settings for your journey areas, what does the main character need to experience to grow to ultimately get to the end of what they thought they wanted, but maybe that changes? Or maybe things happen disappointingly so, all the way, like as the main character expected, all the way until the end. Because you, you know, you do kind of have the anti hero sort of tales where everything happens just as the main character believes it's going to happen. He's very, like, very cynical. Everything is pointless. But, you know, those kind of characters always fascinated me because um, they believe that way, yet they still fight for, quote-unquote, a justice or um, something that they feel is right. So I, I, always, I always found that to be funny for those styles. Um, so we have all of that now in the beginning once we have that all outlined and we've outlined our journey areas for our next part I recommend that you do build your your world building outline first and then come in and put in the details the details are going to be type of clothing these characters uh, wear, how they, you know, their hairstyles. Um, you can personalize it. What, what does the main character pay attention to? Are you noticing that they're vain because they pay attention to everybody's, um, how much they've spent on their clothing? Or does that character just not even care? They don't pay attention to other people. Other people just kind of shuffle in the background and it's all about them um, and what they're experiencing, their work, their friendships, their relationships, um, or lack thereof. Maybe they're just a loner, you know? So when you think of oh and also speech patterns that's another thing to keep in mind do they have high speech do they have low speech um maybe they're just normal like they know when they need to have more of a high speech when talking with other characters but maybe normally everybody has this same version of colloquial speech and those sorts of things all need to be there they all need to be there as you write them and it sounds so overwhelming but trust me when you outline your stories first things are going to come so much easier to you to make those settings and those worlds tailor to your main character and that's really what it's about making everything work together Hey, Dark. Oh, no worries. No worries. We're probably going to be stopping here in the next few minutes. We did a story earlier, a really fun storytelling for everybody. And now we're doing our workshop segments. And uh, then we'll switch on over to Fortnite's. Yeah. And a lot, of, a lot of beginning writers like to take modern settings, and some people never ever go out of those modern settings. I've wrote a few fantasy styles, but I usually keep my fantasy writing for D&D. &D. Um, most of my fantasy sci-fi stories that I write are usually in present times or they're in future, like slightly in the future uh, I have never written one that's like super in the future until recently. So I'm actually trying to think about technologies 
and um, how humans would evolve by then and that sort of thing. So I'm, I'm really enjoying having to write in the future because it's really um, challenging me as a writer. Predict what will happen in manga. <laughs> manga is so much fun to write. That's actually what I wanted to turn Hell's Gate into, uh, but I have to find someone that's gonna be able to help with art because as it stands, art on that, like I'm so far behind. It would probably take me five years to finish all the artwork for that and I ain't no one got time for that. Creeper Freaky? You don't know who Creeper Freaky is, Zangard? He's here like all the time. He supports all the PvE streamers for Fortnite. So, now that you've kind of built your house, you remember the story about the three little pigs? First pig built their house out of straw, second pig um, wood, the third brick. Well, build up your nice little cozy houses and then take a freaking wrecking ball to it. And that's your, that's your conflict, your confliction. You know, it's, it's just like smash it out, smash out that main character's world. It doesn't have to be the typical tragedy type event. It could be political. Like maybe they're just a normal wealthy society that all of a sudden gets overtaken. Maybe they get bombed. Maybe they get, um, you know, invaded. In any, maybe, you know, it's something more small like a home invasion and their life just gets turned upside down. You are the storyteller. You decide what kind of setting and story you want. But after you've got that foundation, that's when the fun begins. Yeah, manga. I love manga. I have a lot of comics as well that I read really really fun now I know it's going to be tempting to gloss over certain factors um, with societies but you need to take a look at your action um, when telling a story if your character is just kind of passing through cities or towns you might want to know enough about the town that you could describe it and you can describe the people um, but you don't have to go too in-depth. You don't have to sit there and talk about their politics there or anything like that, unless the main character is going to be spending some extended time in that part of the story. Then you want to elaborate and fill in the details. How does their culture differ from the culture your main character started out as? Um, and you don't explain all of this in the first chapter as that character goes over. None of that should be explained to the reader. The main character should experience that and then reflect on it. Like, oh, you know, they think it's improper for me to be showing my, my feet or my ankles. Or, you know, like looking around and noticing that maybe this culture covers their feet or maybe this culture covers all of their top or their head or whatever it is your main character can notice that as they go through or maybe they see an advertisement if it's like a future type thing and you see a really weird advertisement that totally wouldn't fly in your culture but definitely is okay there you know it's sort of, sort of that sort of thing do you beat your dog do your hands hurt you know that sort of thing <laughs> like if someone saw that here they'd be like what like I, you'd have like a whole riot of people really angry someone say feet <laughs> hey tea bags yeah well creeper you're not alone though because most people are pulled in by tragedy um, look at our own news and our own society what do more people tend to view tragedy and it's usually very specific tragedy that causes us to you know go into an outrage outrage so you need to look at that as a writer like what really gets us fired up as individuals and why um, go outside of your comfort zone and think what type of society what would they be outraged by um, you know maybe if it's a high-class society and someone just waltzes in and you know slaps <laughs> slaps their queen or something I don't know that's just a silly example but 
what would cause them to freak the fuck out and like you know start a war or something hey shoeless hey how have you been shoeless how's it going we're talking about world building today we just finished up our story earlier we we told a, a spooky story guess what the biggest in english written written book in history is yeah i'll be doing fortnite in just a little bit it's our writer workshop time right now Okay. Okay, I think I covered all of that. Yes. One of the things, okay, I guess on the more practical side when writing is when you're building your outline for your world, write everything you want to go into that world. So you start writing it, right? You've got your outline in mind and you start writing from whatever perspective you're writing from, whether it's from the perspective of an animal, an inanimate object, um, maybe a global perspective as to what's going on maybe there's several individuals you're writing about in your story make sure you keep your timelines in check so you're going to have to write an outline for that too and we'll get to that later this is about world um after you've given your world a history and a culture and a, a politics and all of that sort of thing um keep it simple that's really important for your reader um, they might not understand entirely how your society works, but if you keep it from a normal person's perspective, something that everyone can understand, um, it's, it's going to be more identifiable to the reader. So don't write too much unless you're writing high fantasy, in which case do your research, do a lot of it. Oh, cool. For your brother's graduation nice that sounds fun yeah it's may it's may graduation is soon super smash brothers fan fiction that's awesome <laughs> 3.5 million words oh my goodness that is insane are you making fun of me a little bit did you actually write three and a half million words dude that'd be crazy definitely crazy Okay, sorry guys, just reading over a few of my notes, made sure I covered everything I wanted to cover today. <sighs> okay. Yeah, so one of the big no-nos that a lot of beginning writers do is they over-explain things. And I know we touched on this earlier, but I'm going to go ahead and hone in on this a little more. Do not over-explain everything that is happening to your reader. Um, your reader needs to experience what that character is experiencing. Think about shows. Do they sit there and tell you every stinking thing that the main character is thinking about? No, you're just there and you're along for the journey. Um, so allow your reader to experience and figure things out for themselves. Don't explain to them every aspect of everything that's happening. That just gets boring. Snooze fast. Oh, some other crazy person? Holy cow. That is like, man, that's insane. <laughs> I could not imagine. Three and a half million. Um, now, with the details, um, yes, you want to have a lot of a lot of societal details and background for your main character but you don't have to describe all of it like we just mentioned however if there's going to be a section where your main character is going to be a huge part of later after they kind of you know, take their journey along 
um, each section, make sure that you also have that other culture's um, details and base um, ready to go for the reader. Like have everything outlined as well for that culture and that, you know, their politics and everything once they get there. It needs to be a believable culture. It can't be a one-dimensional or two-dimensional culture. You need to have three dimensions to it. Within every culture, there's people that believe, you know, different things. They might believe the main religion or the main politics, but they also are people too. So you have to think about that in your worlds. Like people aren't going to buy into things even in the real world. So why would a culture all just buy into the same idea or same belief? Like each person is an individual, which is why when your main character comes in, comes into contact with other people, what do they learn and discover about that culture that they initially had a preconceived notion over? And then all of a sudden their world just changes because they're like, oh, okay. So there are reasonable people in this culture. It's not just a bunch of mindless worshipers. Yeah. And with your history, your historical research, it helps to study history anyway before you're going to write a fantasy or a sci-fi story on motivations for that part of the globe in your story. Why might people behave the way they do? Um, how was their city built? Was their city built on tyranny? Was there, you know, were they conquered? was you know one conqueror that came through and conquered it all or were they more of a peaceful like society were they diplomatic maybe they just kind of sectioned off lands um but what happened before that diplomacy you know you you have to think about all of that why a society might be that way <laughs> what sandguard what <laughs> like uh Maybe you also have to look on the more practical side. You also have to look at resources for the land. Um, like why would one society choose to live out in the middle of the desert when they could just go a little bit further north or south where like water flows or there's, you know, any type of node or deposit like iron or silver or gold or certain kinds of really sturdy materials. Like why would this one society choose to live out in the desert? Is it their holy land? Did it once have some kind of um, resources that it no longer has, but their God just keeps telling them to stay there because water will come? You know, you, ha you have to think about all of these sorts of things. Magic or tech? That is a question to ask yourself. Are you gonna use one of those or are you gonna use both of them? Are you gonna combine them? And it's good to think about how that tech or that magic is going to work in your world. Yeah. Wait, what? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I have to say to you. Just <laughs> I get focused on things I'm trying to get across and sometimes my mind just spaces. But yeah, okay. So I'm gonna start here in just a little bit. Probably switch to Fortnite for a little while. Yeah. For you guys, check out these new perks and whatnot. I'm gonna give myself a little bit of a break and we're gonna start at 2 p.m. today. I keep forgetting about that darn alert. <laughs> Supernat! Supernat, thank you so much for the biddies, for the bits. Thanks for coming by and listening to the story earlier. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed the spooky story. <laughs> Rest in peace, headphones. Yeah, I know. <laughs> All right, so we'll be back here in the next 30 minutes and we'll start some Fortnite. Does that sound good to you guys? 
I hope this helps. Um, if you guys have any questions, I haven't seen anyone come in and ask questions about world building or whatnot. If there's anything else you'd like to know, um, feel free to ask me. I'll wait just a few minutes before we switch over and we stop for just a little bit. <laughs> I know it was. It was a high-pitched sound. I was like, whoa. Aw, Pugtatoes, yay! Oh yeah, that's right, I was gonna show you guys. Hold on. Someone asked me yesterday, they wanted to see Pugtato stuff. Um, pull it up for you. you can find <laughs> happy hump day same to you see there get to do the new perk rerolls yes yes let me pull these up for you guys There we go. So I just started this. This is this is the first one. That's my red bubble, which I think everybody has red bubble stuff now. And we got into um, Amazon. And so slowly but surely, Amazon only allows you to upload one design per day. And you have to be really careful about what you um, upload on Amazon. They're way more picky. Like I couldn't do my Friday the 13th shirts that I did on red bubble because uh, they like they just they they wouldn't allow me to have it. I don't know if it's because it's it's similar to the Jason and Freddy or not Freddy uh Michael Myers style face because it's all vectored. So I think they just they didn't want to chance it and they didn't put it up there. But Redbubble took it, no problem. So I had to break it up into two stores because they wouldn't let me do that. But there's pugtatoes on both of them. I did I did one with just Pugtatoes on Redbubble, and then I had another one with Pugtato is Bay. So those are up. Shoeless says, Can you write a good book without drama? There are tons of directors that write stories without quote unquote drama, but really, what do you mean by drama? Because some people see not, yeah, like, I mean, without conflict at all, that'd be a pretty boring story, don't you think? But I have seen some stories before, uh, they're called Slice of Lifestyle, where it just kind of follows the people's lives. But if you think about it, as, even as mellow as it is, there is some type of conflict in that story. So it wouldn't make sense that um, you could write a good story without conflict. You have to have conflict. I think a lot of people do. Let's see. And Zangard, first time an update in a game that has made me happy. Yeah, I think a lot of people are happy about the perk rerolls. I remain skept skeptical until I try it out. We'll I see. I remain yes. Well, I want you to think about it. Like, really think about it, Shoeless. How could you just tell a story, unless it's like a journal type? Really, does any of us have something that's happened in our life without conflict? Have you ever, like, had a moment where you're unhappy about something? I mean, even that's just a minute conflict, but it's a conflict. Um, it's cognitive dissonance, right? Uh, fighting with oneself. So, honestly, I don't think that it could be done. I mean, it would have to be extremely droll. It would have to be like talking about this person's life day to day, doing the same thing every single day, never venturing out. Like, I think I've seen some stories start out like that, but at some point a conflict happens. Like you just, 
It just couldn't be done, no. You've never had any conflicts in your life. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Whatever. Okay, that's a lie. <laughs> Awesome. Well, it's obvious you guys are wanting to talk about Fortnite, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and take a break, and then when we come back, we'll play on Fortnite PvE. So I don't have any more writing questions for today. We're going to go ahead and end it, and I will see you guys at 2 p.m. Awesome? Awesome. Take care, everyone. I'll see you at 2 p.m. for Fortnite. All right. See you soon.